You say goodbye. And I say hello. Hello, hello. I don't know why you say goodbye. I say hello. Hello, hello. I don't know why you say goodbye. I say hello. Oh no. You say goodbye. And I say hello. Hello, hello. Hey, hello. Hey, hey, hello. Yeah. Right then. Hello, loves. How you doing? I hope all is well and I hope so far you have enjoyed all the videos that I've been sharing with you on this channel. And if you're new and you haven't seen any of those videos, hi and hola. My name is Keish Martin and I'm a licensed therapist and today I'm going to give you some tips on assertive communication. All right? So if that sounds like something you're needing, then stay put. This is going to be helpful. Right then. Moving on. can serve you very well in many different areas of your life, especially if you find yourself having to deal with difficult people. Ugh. So you're going to want to watch this video all the way through so you can get some great tips on how to deal with those people that just drive you crazy. Let's talk about what assertive communication is not, okay? Assertive communication is not passive, it's not aggressive, and it's not passive aggressive, right? Communicating assertively lets people know what you believe, what you think, what you feel, or your concerns in an open and honest way without threats, manipulations, or hidden agendas, okay? So the first tip that I have for you when trying to assert yourself with someone that's difficult is that whenever you're trying to communicate with a difficult person, it's not about winning. Because if you go in trying to win, you're gonna lose. Because difficult people are often pretty unreasonable. Right? And they're going to try to win no matter what. They're going to throw any kind of curveball at you to just knock you off your feet so you don't know what's up and what's down. Okay? So when you go in and try to communicate with someone who is difficult, remember, it's not about winning. All right? It's a matter of trying to communicate what your thoughts, your feelings, your needs, or concerns are. Period. No ifs, ands, or buts. Okay? If you go in with that mindset of this is about what it is that you need or what it is that you want or what is it that you expect, you're more likely to keep your cool. Because it's really easy to get caught up in, I have to win. And that's totally going to interfere with any effective communication. So keep that in mind. Now the next one I'm going to tell you to use is iMessages. Now wait, stop. I know you may have heard this before, but give me a minute. The problem that you can run into that some people are often not aware of is how our iMessages can still imply blame if we use feeling words that imply the actions of another person. So saying things like, I feel neglected, I feel ignored, I feel cheated, etc. That implies an action of another person. In order to try to neutralize any potential conflict or heightened arousal and cause that person to become defensive because they're probably already a little defensive anyway, hey. you really want to focus on what you're needing, what you're feeling, or what you're thinking. And so in order to do that, you have to get behind the unmet need or the wants or what it is you're trying to achieve with this communication. So instead of saying something like, you're leaving me out, you would want to say something like, I feel frustrated because I would like to be included. Okay? It's very different. And that could be really helpful in the workplace and really with anybody. So you really want to focus on and think about and reflect on what it is you're trying to achieve with this communication before you try to attempt to communicate with someone. It's really difficult to stand our ground and to be solid if we're kind of unsure about what's beneath all that's going on. And difficult people can make it really hard for us to figure that out because they play with our emotions and they know what buttons to push. So if you're finding yourself frazzled and out of sorts because of a difficult person that you're not communicating effectively with, then that's where you need to take a step back and center yourself and figure out what's beneath all the feelings that are coming up as a result of them pushing your buttons. All right? Which brings me to the next point. Removing those buttons. I know it's easier said than done, but you can. Part of being able to remove those buttons is to have a deeper understanding of what's beneath them, all right? So difficult, toxic, highly unreasonable people really know how to get to you and get under your skin. So if you're able to learn how to manage your emotions and regulate what you feel, when you approach someone like that, you won't give them power to control your emotions because you're already in control of them. So even if you're getting distressed, angry, frustrated, or whatever, you're taking responsibility for what you're feeling. You're grounding yourself. You're doing all the things you got to do to connect with your feelings and be all right with your feelings and know that you're in control, not that other person. But as long as you're not connecting with your feelings and reflecting on your feelings 
And all the junk that's coming up is a result of this person. You're leaving yourself vulnerable for them to find those buttons and push. And they will try, like hell, to do it. So, so the more you know yourself, the more grounded you are in yourself, the more you understand and reflect on your feelings, the easier it will be to deal with unreasonable people because you'll be solid and center and grounded. And you know, they could be throwing a tantrum and getting all aggressive and all the things. And you might be scared, you might be frustrated, you might be all the things, but you know you can keep yourself safe. You know you can manage what you're feeling. Even if that person's doing all the things that they can do, try to get a rise out of you. All right. So basically keeping your cool, keeping your center, knowing how to do that independently of this person or this situation is going to help you navigate those situations better. All right. So daily practice, connect with what you're feeling, understand what you're feeling, understanding what those feelings are trying to articulate to you and pay attention. Okay. Right there. So the next thing I'm going to encourage you to do is just to practice reflective listening practice validating even if you don't agree even if you see that this person is completely off their rocker just try to validate whatever they're experiencing or whatever it is they're telling you doesn't mean that you're agreeing okay it's a big difference so an example could be like i can see how you would feel that way or reflecting back to them their feelings oh i can see that you're pretty frustrated about this sometimes it can help diffuse someone that is a bit hostile now keep in mind, this is not always the case and this is not always gonna work. But the more practice that you have, the more you're able to see and identify when this is going to be effective for you or not. Now keep in mind, when you're dealing with any kind of difficult person, usually their ego is behind the wheel, all right? It's driving everything. It's driving their responses to you. It's driving their thoughts about you, whatever the case may be. That person's behavior has absolutely nothing to do with you. It has nothing to do with your worth, your value, your abilities, nothing. It's all about that person, okay? And hopefully that will give you a solid footing on how to approach this person, right? So if you can remember in that moment, this isn't about me, all right? That guy's throwing a tantrum. It's not my problem, all right? Not my circus, not my monkeys. Right here. Another thing to keep in mind is that if you see that you're not able to neutralize this interaction, know when you need to walk away. If you feel threatened or you feel like this person is unpredictable, have an exit strategy, all right? So try to plan ahead of time how you're gonna to speak to this person, where you're gonna to speak to this person, and oftentimes it can be helpful if you have other people around. And so if you can, see if you can't have someone present or nearby, which might help be a buffer for you. Also, you need to be really connected with where your boundaries are, all right? If your boundaries are weebly wobbly, you're gonna be a lot more vulnerable to backing down, being passive, and just giving up and allowing that person to walk all over you, all right? So going back to what I was saying, really learn what your feelings are alerting you to because your feelings typically alert you to when you need to set boundaries or when you have an expectation that's not being met or you're not being treated well. Okay, now another one that can diffuse things if you feel like this person is just won't stop, it's like a dog with a bone, <laughs> is use the broken record method. All right, so if you say no and they're pushing, 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 try to brainstorm ways that you might be able to get that across in a different way. So if they don't take no for an answer, you could say something like, that doesn't work for me. But I'm sure we might be able to come to a mutual agreement if we consider other options. Another way of approaching that too, if they're not accepting your no, is you can say something like, well, I can hear that it's difficult for you to accept that I'm not able to do this thing. However, my answer remains the same. If you'd like to go back and brainstorm some other options and talk to me about it, I'd be more than willing to have that discussion with you later. But right now, my answer remains no. No. Okay, so give that one a try too. Please keep in mind that this is not always gonna work. All right, you only have so much within your power to effectively deal with someone that's hostile, aggressive, or toxic. So just try to remember that when you're thinking about the things that I'm sharing with you. I've got some more that you don't wanna miss, all right? So stick with it. But before I do, if you're liking this video, give me a thumbs up and also leave me a comment if you have other ideas that you might be able to share with someone on how they might be able to better assert themselves with difficult people. All right, thanks. Next, we gotta be confident, all right? And this takes practice and building that confidence goes back to knowing yourself, understanding yourself, not being shaky in your values or who you are. Because if you are, then you're gonna be really malleable and people can really push you around, all right? And if you know yourself well and you're solid, then you're more likely to be confident when you're trying to address anything with anybody. Also, it's important to keep in mind that you wanna frame things as positively as you can. 
Now, I'm not saying sugarcoat anything. I'm talking about being honest, but making sure it's not coming out in a negative way. So don't be afraid to confront people who are challenging you, but you can learn how to do it with gentle correction. And oftentimes difficult people and unreasonable people do not know how to respond to that kind of stuff. They're used to antagonizing people and getting a response out of people. So if you're able to stay solid, grounded, express yourself and challenge them with gentle correction, you might find that to be more effective. You can be gentle in your correction, but also validate your anger and articulate firmly and concisely what the issue is when you confront that person. Also, don't forget that you need to be open to criticism as well, but you can confront someone when they're not being constructive about it. So saying things like, I'll take that into consideration, or thank you for bringing that to my attention, can oftentimes diffuse the situation, even if you don't agree with it. Now, if you're worried about whether or not you can do this, fear not. All right, I've got some links down in the description of this video to help you learn the difference between passive, aggressive, and understand what assertive looks like, all right? The first step is understanding. So that is available to you. And now, if you're still scared and you're still like, oh, I don't know if I can do this, you can. And if you need help with that, you know what I'm gonna say, all right? Go talk to a therapist. If you've made it this far into the video, thanks for sticking with me. I'm pretty sure everything I've shared with you is probably going to come in handy a time or two. And so if you enjoyed this video, then make sure you like it and also comment down below. Until next time, be well, be strong, and be loved.